Okay, everybody, welcome back to the Alternative Energies Lab, part two of the ECU Manipulator Control. Don't know what else to call it, so that sounds good. Um, thanks for coming back. Uh, hope you enjoy it. Doing a lot of uh, a lot of experimenting with this, you know, these different uh, different designs that I found on the internet. Um, I did find a, a user on YouTube that's a uh, seems like he's put most of his effort into doing the uh, iffy controls and um, he seems like he really knows what he's doing so and that's where I got the design for the one that's inside here um, from Rick so you know Rick thanks I appreciate everything that you uh, helped me with on this one uh, hopefully uh, hopefully we can get this thing up and running the right way you know I'm working on a vehicle but this is an Alexis. It's a it's a 2001 Lexus, which has got the same engine. So it's got the same motor in it that the Toyotas do. The Lexus is made by Toyota. Uh, I'm producing enough hydrogen. I've got my hydrogen flow, but it's still not doing any difference. At first, it'll make a difference. But once the computer catches back up to what's going on, then the, the truck defaults back to its um, back to its uh, normal fuel. So I know it's an O2 issue. I know it, I know that's what it is. So that's why I really haven't been pushing that hard on the cells lately. I've been pushing more on the uh, O2 and the map sensors. But I think we need to control both. I think just try trying to control one. The computers in these vehicles are smart enough to realize that if the map sensor says we have this much going in and the O2 sensor says, well, it doesn't agree with what the map sensor is doing, this computer is going to default back to what? Uh, it, it what the factory set it for so if we can cut if we can control both of them keeping them in line with each other i believe then then we're going to start noticing a difference not that obviously we're going to run these vehicles just on hydrogen but we'll actually be able to start noticing a difference and get the mileage up there uh you know where where it should be able to be you know burning at 100 percent efficient so that's my goal. That's what I'm working on. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to probably put most of my time in the next few weeks, months, working on the controls parts of the cells. There's enough of us out there that are building the cells that are really producing, you know, great volumes, and um, that's fine. So I just don't think there's enough of us working on the controls to control it. Um, so that's that's where I'm gonna I'm gonna start steering my my attention towards the uh, controls to manipulate these these uh, these vehicles. Um, the uh, I sold a uh, I sold our motorcycles and I bought a little uh, Mazda Miata. I'm gonna use that as my test vehicle because it's such as a small car and it's a four cylinder. You know we'll start small see how it'll see how it'll work there. Um, the, uh, this one is actually built for my van. I'm going to put this one in my van because it's a V6 and I have the two. That's with this iffy controller. I can control two of them. Um, that just give you a heads up. That's what's going on. Uh, we're, uh, you know, keeping it going. Keeping it going forward. Um, picked up a couple alternators the other day. Neighbor brought me up three more alternators the other day. So the wind generator still isn't out of the picture. Um, but unfortunately, you need money to keep all these experiments going, and I just don't have it right now. Um, so once I get uh, back on my feet, uh, we'll get on the wind generators. But um, just wanted to give everybody a heads up. Um, that's what's going on. Working on uh, some control modules, trying to keep them tight, trying to keep them clean, trying to keep them small. I mean, there's no use of having these great big things dangling all over. So, um, you know, obviously this is something that will eventually want to be underneath the hood. So we'll take these knobs off and I'll actually put little smaller pots, you know, I'll put smaller pot switches in here. So uh, it's not so big and bulky. Uh, but that's what I had. I'm a, I'm a big one for recycling. So, but to give you an idea okay is this box is three inches wide by five and a half inches long by two inches tall 
So it's three by five and a half by two. So it's pretty small. I mean, it's a pretty small, um, pretty small box. And like I said, I, I if if you noticed, there's not one gauge. There's only one. There's only one idiot light on here. That's it. There's no gauges. There's no. I I, I don't think we need all these. Once this thing goes underneath the hood. Who's going to need all these meters and gauges anyway? And most of the uh, most of the stupid gauges that you buy and everything like that are worthless anyway. I mean, they don't tell you anything. They're just a bunch of pretty lights going bouncing back and forth. Um, I'm not I'm not going. Uh, you know, functionality is what it's all about. I mean, I've got a I've got a wall worth of testing equipment here. Um, you know, oscilloscopes. You know, meters. I mean, you name it. I don't need. I don't need the pretty lights. Once I get this thing working, tweaked the way it's got to be tweaked, that's it. It's done. It's running. It's underneath the hood. It, it, it's a done deal. So that's where we're going. I know I've been babbling on, but um, anyway, we're still around. We're still trying to nip this thing in the butt. And um, I'll try and keep you guys up to date on what's going on. And uh, take care. I appreciate you guys taking the time out looking at our videos. You know, please subscribe, and um, God bless. We'll see you on the next one. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching it. That concludes the video on the ECU manipulator control module. Uh, any comments, leave me some comments, uh, feedback, what you think, uh, any other suggestions that you might want to do or change on it. Uh, let me know. All right. Thanks. Talk to you next time.